everybody! Today I'm so excited to share five tips that have been keeping me productive. For those of you who don't know me, I am taking a gap year right now and I have made several productive vlogs and day in my life and I always get asked what are some productivity tips. So I sat down, I thought about a few and I hope this video helps you guys. So let's just get started with the video. Tip number one is to keep being curious. I found myself in several ruts and it's really hard to lift yourself up when you feel like there's no purpose and there's no reason to get back up on your feet. But I've realized that I'm a huge person that likes to write things down and there's been so many things on my bucket list or so many goals and new things that I wanna try out. When I look at those things that I wanna do, I'm like, why am I spending time not doing anything when I could have that time to learn something new, to be able to get that rewarding feeling of doing something and accomplishing it. So Skillshare has kindly partnered with me in this video and I would like to to share a little bit about what Skillshare is and how it's been helping me. So Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of different classes for creative people that just want to learn. You can explore new skills, you can deepen your existing passions, and get lost in creativity. There's classes from video editing, Photoshop, entrepreneurship, journaling, the basic to advanced levels on how to work Excel and spreadsheets. All the things that I just listed are things that I've always wanted to get better at or practice more of. And right now I'm also in the process of learning Jordi Vandeput's video editing with Adobe Premiere Pro for beginners. This is another thing that I am hopefully going to get better at in 2021. I want to get better with other video editing softwares. Currently I use Final Cut Pro X, but I would love to learn more about Premiere Pro. I've used it here and there in the past few years, but I've never really put my full efforts and focus on Adobe Premiere for my YouTube channel. I really love the structure and format of Skillshare. At the end of certain lessons, we'll also make sure that you are on the right track by providing online quizzes. This community is specifically for those that just want to learn. So there are no ads, they provide premium classes so that you can stay focused and follow your creativity wherever it takes you. What I really love about Skillshare is that it is super affordable. It's less than $10 for an annual subscription. And the first 1,000 people that use the link that I provide below will get a free trial of the Skillshare premium membership. Once I get a better gist of Adobe Premiere Pro, hopefully my content will also look a bit different. But regardless, super excited to be learning more and I'm so thankful that Skillshare provides these amazing classes where I can keep on staying curious and keep on learning and achieve the goals I want to achieve in life. Number two is to create a to-do list. I like to create to-do lists in the morning. I have a bunch of lists. For example, I have one right here in the very front home screen page on my phone. It just has to-dos. Let's say I'm like texting someone, I go back to the home page and I'm constantly reminded of what I need to do. This is just the reminders app and I have it as a widget on my phone and it's really nice to just be able to see the visuals of what I need to get done. I also use my planner. This is a planner that I got from Mochi Things. I love it so much because it's super, super simple. I always write down what I need to get done that week at the very top and I always make sure that the weekly tasks that I need to do are planned accordingly throughout the rest of the week. So it's really nice to be able to see and it's also super rewarding to be able to check it off. So I find that creating to-do lists have really helped me stay on task. I know a lot of people like to actually have the hour early schedules as well like from 6 to 7 a.m wake up take a shower and then like 7 to 8 eat breakfast stretch you know but i don't really like sticking to a time that kind of stresses me out so i just write down everything i need to get done and then if i don't then i do an x and i hate those x marks so the next day i make sure that that x mark becomes a check mark so yeah it really helps me stay on top of my things and i highly suggest you guys try it out and do the same number three is to network taking a gap right now has been really interesting to see how I should plan out my days, how I'm going to manage my time. And one thing I really try to challenge myself is to reach out to someone even on LinkedIn or any networking app and asking if I could just have 15 minutes of their time and that I am a college student. A lot of older people in their careers that are professionals now have always said that one thing that gravitates their attention is the fact that we are students still. And for those of you who are students as well, just emphasizing that you just want to keep on learning and see how they've been able to get to where they are and seeing their growth and development in their career. People just want to help at the end of the day. And I always end up hearing something along the lines with whenever I am networking or chatting with someone. I've had so many mentors and so many great people that 
have led me to where I am today and all I want to do is just give back. So sharing their stories to us may be like such an amazing thing and we feel so thankful but at the same time on their end they feel like they're also doing a great deed. They were once in our shoes and they just want to be a good resource. So I think networking can have sometimes like a negative connotation because some people can just do cold calls or cold emails just saying like I want to know this about you and it's not very intentional but if you really do stumble upon someone's page or profile and you realize that that person has a lot of things that you are interested about and you message them with a genuine intent chances are that you will be able to have a great connection and chances are that they will respond and then both sides again will feel great being able to chat with one another so I really suggest you guys reaching out to someone and seeing if they would give you the time and have a conversation about whatever you're wanting to learn more of. I've always had interest in the music, entertainment, and fashion industries, and so I'm still trying to constantly find ways to learn more from people that are working in those industries specifically right now and trying to reach out to them. I know I still need to do more, but networking allows me to also feel super productive after the call because all the great things that they say always ends up making me feel like I should do something too. I should do something after this call. I am not just being a lazy bum. And lastly, I really feel like networking has also given me a glimpse of what kind of industry I really am interested in and what position I want to pursue. It really allows me to keep staying curious and ask all questions that I want to before it is like too late once I have to come to the decision of what I want to pursue in however many years later. Even though I'm not interning for that person or being a shadow of that person, it's really great to be able to actually hear what they have to say about their personal life and their personal journey in that career that they're in. Even hearing the cons about their job or hearing about how they never thought that they would end up in that position. It's super interesting to be able to see how their development has occurred and how I can either relate to them or I also have a takeaway of like, oh, you guys do this. Turns out I don't think I really am interested in doing that. It's also a nice reminder of evaluating if I want to really continue to talk to people in that similar field or if I want to go into another area that I am interested in learning more of. Tip number four, when someone says, oh, I'm just doing it because I'm bored or ah, it's just for the funsies, those kind of hobbies actually can turn into something. One of the interests that I have is creating Spotify playlists on my downtime. If you guys want to see my Spotify, I have it linked down below. But for me, it's one of those things where I do it for the funsies just to be able to to have a playlist that has songs that are aligned with each other based on whatever I title that playlist. And one of mine that I really enjoy listening to frequently is called Korean Chill Music. Initially, I was creating this playlist for myself and only for myself, but then there came a point where I was like, the songs and the artists I have featured in this playlist, I feel like other people will also enjoy. So I created a TikTok, a very simple, like, here are some songs that are great that are Korean chill. And then I just featured that my playlist is also available on my Spotify and I ended up getting a few likes. I think I have like 80 likes on that playlist now and I feel pretty proud to know that there are other people in the world that share the same music taste and also enjoy the songs that I have included. And so it makes me feel like I actually did do something productive because not only was I making myself happy, but I was making other people happy as well. And the fact that there's a slight reward in this activity that I had that was initially just for me just to do for fun, it's so simple, but it's so amazing to know that when I was using that time to do that, little thing for me the time was well worth it all these activities are starting because you yourself just want to do it whatever it's a hobby it's a side thing no big deal but there's so much joy that can come out of it and although it is a small win those small wins are so rewarding in the end at the end of the day your happiness is productive so this falls into my fifth and final tip and that is to take a step back and ask yourself what productive really means to you as I mentioned earlier I have made several productive vlogs but I've also came across other people's productive vlogs and I realized that what we showcase in our own productive vlogs tend to have similarities but they also have differences. So what I feature in my vlog that's productive could be watching K-drama with my family, not being on my phone, and going on a walk. However, someone else's productive day, they could also argue that productivity to them is catching up on emails, texting those that they weren't able to respond to, studying, reading. I think it is very important that we detach ourselves from the word that society has defined productivity to be. Society can change our perspectives due to the desire of fitting in and being unison, but we're all on our own pace. I hope that we all remind ourselves that we are doing a great job. I'm so happy that you were able to watch this video and I'm also so happy that I was able to film this video. This was a win-win for both of us and what I think is called being productive. I'm curious to know what your guys' definition of being productive is. If you could please 
leave what you define productivity as in the comments down below. I am sure that I and many others would love to read what you have to say. Please make sure to check out Skillshare and again, the first thousand people that click on the link below will have a free trial to a premium membership to explore your creativity. Thank you guys so, so much for watching today's video. I hope you got a little takeaway out of it and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye friends! Mwah.